Dr. Nishi Singh is a microbiologist and virologist of great repute. She headed the Department of Microbiology, Pathology and Infection Control at Dubai Hospital and Rashid Hospital for 10 years. She taught at the various colleges of the United Arab Emirates and was one of the favorite teachers. Her work in the field of medical education prevention and control of infectious diseases has received many accolades in the UAE community. And I want to share with you little tidbits about why do pads stink. Now, remember the vagina is full of the textbook of microbiology, as I say. Every possible bacteria that you can think of, and not just bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi live in this, um, this little space that we have. And that is nature's way of protecting us by lining with a friendly line of soldiers so that we prevent any pathogens, the disease-causing uh, bugs to come in and invade our space. So this is really our uh, nature's own enemy that's protecting the entrance to our bodies. Okay. Now, so the problem with that is that once we start using uh, menstrual pads, the blood comes from the uterine cavity and then it gets contaminated with the uh, vaginal microflora and then if you're not changing your pads frequently remember the pads are made up of very uh, absorbent highly absorbent cellulose like material so all this normal friendly bacteria are now essentially coming into the pad where we have added a lot of blood and bugs love blood because that is the most rich and nutritive material and now imagine giving giving the perfect uh, conditions for the bacteria to grow it's warm it's moist there's lots of food and there is a place for them to live so of course they will grow rampantly and then what's the problem that we face after that because when bacterial metabolism happens they release uh, volatile amines which are basically in short smelly gases that is why your pad stinks I just want to share with you some facts about the advantages of using the menstrual cup. Uh, why it is safer sitting in the vaginal microbiome is that remember when the cup is nicely fixed, then it is forming a barrier between the vaginal wall which carries all the microbes that are normally present in the vagina and the blood is collecting directly from the mouth of the cervix into the, uh, into the menstrual cup. So what happens is that even though we have a rich um, nutritive material for the bacteria to grow one of the reasons the bacterial multiplication doesn't occur very fast within the confines of the cup is because the cup is made up of medical grade silicon it is really the same material that we use for catheters and intravascular lines and various other equipment that we use in for medical treatment now this doesn't support the growth of bacteria and the second point is that when we are when it is nicely fixed in the vagina the bacteria on the walls are not coming in direct contact with the blood so of course there is a theoretical possibility that some bacteria will get into the cup however when it is full you're going to take it out and drain it and wash it with water and put it back so you really haven't given the time that is required for bacterial multiplication to start because it is a known fact that bacteria have what is called in their growth phase a lag phase. You know, it's like introducing a child to a new environment. They're very quiet for the first few hours. Only when they are comfortable with the environment, they will start behaving normally. So bacteria also take time in the lag phase. So it's not as if you introduce bacteria into a culture medium and they start growing immediately. So we take advantage of that and we drain it out and then wash it and then start again. So there's a minimal chance that there will be bacterial contamination of the blood that you have discarded. Thank you.